I think the historical roots of this catastrophic invasion of Ukraine actually go back to the beginning of the 20th century uh, when Russia failed to democratize. Uh, the core of this crisis is that this is an authoritarian regime that fears any democracy on its borders. And um, in the 20th century, at the beginning of the 20th century, the Tsarist regime had a chance to democratize. It was on the road to uh, limited democratization. Then the catastrophe of the First World War happened and uh, the Tsarist regime was swept away and with it was swept away the chance for the next 80 years for Russia to be a democratic state. Had it been a democratic state, I think it would have made a democratic accommodation with a democratic Ukraine. And tragically, this, this was strangled in the period after the First World War. Um, the second chance for Russia to democratize happened, of course, after the end of the collapse of the Berlin Wall in 1991. Yeltsin had a chance to democratize, um, and Russia failed that test. Um, it was a near-run thing, though. The idea that Russia can never be democratic seems to me to be false. There were, as I say, two occasions when it might have been, and it didn't. But the failure to democratize in Russia in the 1990s turned the state over to Vladimir Putin in 1999, and we are where we are now because it's become a corrupt authoritarian autocracy that uses uh, police terror and violence to maintain power. And basically, I don't see an end to this long crisis until this regime changes, not merely until Putin goes, but until the regime is replaced by something that moves towards a democratic direction. This is not something the West can create or change on its own. This is something for the Russian people, finally disgusted with, uh, with what's been done in their name. Um, I think we can help, <clears throat> and what's happening is, is a economic boycott and, and sanctions regime, which is basically strangling the Russian economy, but I fear that it's going to take a long time. The Russians are used to hardship and difficulty, and I think it'll be a long time before the regime cracks under the weight of sanctions, or I fear that it might be. Um, but that, I think, is the only instrument we've got to assist the process by which Russia turns away from autocracy towards a democratic path in which they make peace and acknowledge the right of Ukraine to be self-determining. Uh, on the Ukrainian side, I think the, um, the reality has been that uh, since Maidan, since the Orange Revolution, uh, since the loss of Crimea in 2014, I think Ukraine has stepped up magnificently to the challenges of becoming a democracy. Yes, it's corrupt, it's not very perfect, but one of the things that strikes you when you watch the news footage is that this is a capable state that continues to function even under bombardment. The trains continue to run, the military continues to operate, the Zelensky and the, the top of the regime continue to function. Courageous people are still working hospitals. The state is not disintegrated. Well, this is an extraordinary achievement if you've been under three weeks of total war to have a state that continues to function and to have massive uh, um, unity on the part of uh, Ukrainians, um, that's an extraordinary achievement. And part of that unity that's most impressive is that Ukraine has been divided between Russian speakers and Ukrainian speakers, but that division appears to be over. Russian speakers are as furious at what Putin has done as Ukrainian speakers and are working side by side. Um, so in many ways, the last three weeks have been the making and the creation of the Ukrainian nation, and I'm absolutely confident that um, Ukrainian nationhood and statehood cannot be defeated by Russian uh, violence, and, and that <clears throat> Putin has a, a fin actually created or helped to create the very uh, reality that he wished to crush and destroy. Uh, so in the very long term, um, I remain optimistic that one day we will have a democratic Russia, one day we'll have a democratic Ukraine. The only question is how and when, and I fear in the short term um, 
there's going to be a terrible amount of bloodshed and loss. The final thing I'd say relates to CEU. You know, we're a university that has welcomed Russians and Ukrainians to our campus for 30 years. It's one of the things we can do to keep great Ukrainian students and great Russian students together as we did during the Balkan Wars when we had Croats and Serbs and Bosniaks all in the same classroom. That's what we have to do. That's our mission. We also need to help our Ukrainian alumni. We need to help uh, everybody affected by the war. And I'm, I'm sure that uh, CU will rise to that challenge as we always have in the past.